Greetings, and welcome to the Game of Hobbit. Today we are covering the Twilight Forest by Benematic. Twilight Forest adds in a new dimension to explore, offering plenty of content for you to do, from fighting new bosses and conquering dungeons, to traversing through the many new forests and more. Surprisingly, it's quite simple to gain access to the dimension, requiring vanilla flowers to surround a small water source and a diamond to be thrown in. Upon entering, you'll be greeted by one of the many enchanted forests, illuminated under the magical twilight sky. You may also bump into some of the new creatures right away, like the bighorn sheep. Keep in mind that the portal on the other side are not the safest compared to other mods. Your portal could be up in the highest trees, place you in a biome that you shouldn't be, or situate you in the Naga's courtyard. It's rare, but it can happen. Before you go running off into the blue, you'll need to figure out where you need to go first. Twilight Forest adopts a progression-based system, where you start with tackling the easier locations first, and then gradually gaining access to tougher areas. Biomes and dungeons which are not available will become protected. Straying from the path the mod puts you on and venturing to these restricted areas will cause many repercussions. Chests will be locked, mobs won't take damage, and blocks are unbreakable, to entire biomes being enveloped by weather systems, inflicting several negative effects to any trespassers. As much as it sounds a bit intimidating, there is two guides that can help you out, the magic map and the advancement system. The key component of the map is the magic map focus, made with a raven's feather, torchberries and glowstone. Surrounding a magic map focus with paper will create the map. Instead of a regular map, magic maps only show biomes and major landmarks like dungeons. In terms of what boss or dungeon to tackle first, the advancement system will point you in the right direction. With the guidance from both the map and the advancements, you can then proceed with facing against the bosses and dungeons this mod has to offer. Twilight Forest has three phases for you to advance, each yielding its own assortment of dungeons, bosses and loot. Starting progression is the beginner phase of the Twilight Forest, introducing you to the dimension, its beauties and many dangers. As it is meant to simply get you acquainted with a new place, exploration is fairly limited but you won't need to worry about running into hostile mobs on the surface. You can venture underground and get any diamonds you're missing, harvest the new wood types for building with, or hunt down the Naga and the Lich to progress further. Upon defeating the Lich, across the land will be unlocked. Now you can explore most of what the Twilight Forest offers without risking major consequences. You can wander deep in the dark forests in search of the Goblin Knight Stronghold, or hunt the Winter Wolves in the Snowy Forest. This phase is the longest out of the three, requiring you to conquer several bosses and face many perils in preparation for the home run. Acting as the final phase of the mod, the player will be tested to face the worst this dimension has to offer. At this stage, you should have outfitted yourself with the strongest gear to help you endure the final stretch. Pushing through this will test your strength against the troll caves below the surface, to wandering through the brittle thornlands, and even make you face two giant selves. The final castle however, the last dungeon in this mod, is incomplete as of this video, but is still free to explore. In the Twilight Forest, many dungeons are open for conquering, with several bosses waiting for your challenge. Adding a layer of difficulty to fight in the bosses, they have their own mechanics to spice up the fight. Cutting off a Hydra's head for example, will cause two more to replace it, whilst triggering the Ghast Trap at the right time will let you deal significant damage to the Urghast. Multiple bosses will also have a series of attacks to force you to either adapt and fight back, or perish in doing so. When going against the Snow Queen, you will need to be alert and on your feet at all times, as she can cast hordes of ice crystals to rapidly damage you, to casting ice magic, or even slamming you with her sled. Having these mechanics changes how you approach these bosses, as running up to them and button mashing won't do the trick. You have to be strategic with your attacks, and analyse your opponents to defeat them. Moving into the dungeons, Twilight Forest provides multiple dungeons for you to face, with many housing bosses, whilst a few don't. These dungeons are not only home to many dangerous creatures, but contain many secrets for you to find, rewarding you for chasing its various nooks and crannies. But be aware, these dungeons also contain all kinds of traps and puzzles, so you want to stock yourself up with plenty of food and powerful gear to endure these long and treacherous places. Despite their countless rooms for loot and their variety of mobs throughout, they do tend to feel repetitive over time. 
Of course, conquering through these dungeons and bosses will reward you with increasingly powerful items and gear that will help you face the harder obstacles this mod has. All the bosses when slain will drop a trophy of their head. These are not only required for you to unlock the Goblin Knight Stronghold, but can be displayed around your base, letting others know of your deeds within the Twilight Forest. On top of dropping their head, each boss drops their own array of loot that can prove useful when fighting the stronger bosses. If you're getting tired of constantly eating, you can fill yourself up with a Hydro Chop, keeping your hunger and saturation full for long periods of time. You can follow the Lich's footsteps and summon your own horde of zombies to fight for you with the Zombie Scepter, or instead drain the life of your enemies to heal yourself with the Life Drain Scepter. To better outfit yourself for future battles, you can gather enough materials to craft one of the many new sets of armor. You can hunt down four Alpha Yetis and be your own little Alpha Yeti, or mix fiery tears with iron into fiery armor to burn the foes who harm you. There's plenty of loot this mod brings, and because of their usefulness, it encourages players to farm particular bosses for the item they want. Twilight Forest offers plenty of new dungeons to face and bosses to defeat. The variety of creatures a dungeon has and the mechanics of boss uses makes these places challenging yet rewarding, making you want to chase them for more loot. Despite the amount of dungeons and bosses there are, the rest of the dimension feels shallow. The caves don't offer many incentives to delve into. Traversing a larger, more denser forest can be quite laggy, particularly for lower end computers, and the fact that you are shown where to go and what to do can make you just skip everything and miss the smaller and more niftier details this mod has. Despite that, if you're wanting a new dimension to explore or start in, or seeking to fight more challenging bosses, then this should be for you. Thanks to Benomatic for making this beautiful mod, and link to download it is in the description below. And that is all for today. Thank you all for watching, and have a good day.